In my last video I built this little tool stand that holds my Tormac sharpening machine and in this video I'm making the five drawers underneath that hold the accessories and the sharpening jigs with soft closed drawer slides. For the material I'm using 12mm birch plywood. After cutting a piece off of the big sheet that would be enough for all the parts I need, I pre-sanded it. That will save me a lot of time later on. Then I cut it into strips and then into the final sized pieces. The grain runs along the piece. So here I have no pieces for two smaller drawers, three bigger drawers and only this much scrap material. Now for the joinery of the drawers I usually go with box joints and I haven't used my pan trout in a while so that's what I'm using today. So the setup I have here is the box joint template with a matching follower and of course also a matching rod of it. It will plunge 12mm deep which is my stock thickness and on the table I have my 90 degree fence. I have a sacrificial piece on the bottom to prevent blowout and also one on the top. Align this is easy, I just bump it against the router bit edge and then clamp it down. To cut the matching pieces, the setup doesn't change at all. I just had to make a clean edge on my sacrificial pieces again. The only difference is that I now cut with the follower in the slots that I skipped previously and I will now skip the ones that I used for cutting before. So now let's check the fit. Perfect. The boxes themselves fit really good. Next is cutting a groove for the drawer bottom and on my prototype it already looks quite good. I set my table saw fence 6mm away from this side of the blade and also raise the blade to 6mm and then I just cut once like this and once like this and that's how these grooves are done. Now I don't plan to clamp these drawers because when I clamp them like this they bend like so and if I let them clamp during the glue dries then that bend will stay. So I just clamp them tight once and then release the clamping pressure again. And since the box strands are so tight, this will stay together. Now just checking for square. The excess glue and wood I could quickly sand away with the belt sander. Then I cut the draw bottoms to width and once that fits to length. Well, all drawer bottoms fit. On one I had an excellent idea which is gluing this piece on the wrong way. Yeah, that made it absolutely perfect. Now I can glue everything together at the same time, clamp it at the same time, because I made some spacer pieces just to cut off from the bottoms. And position the second drawer exactly on that. Next drawer then goes on top of there. And some more spacers. 
and the last drawer. Now I can add some long clamps at the whole package. And through the spacers I make sure that everything gets clamped properly in the rabbits. Lastly, I routed a chamfer on all edges. Since I sanded everything before gluing, I can now already apply a finish. While that finish is drying, we can have a look at the soft close drawer slides. First of all, these were nicely sponsored by a viewer who bought me these through my Amazon wishlist, so thanks for that. Now, how does the self retracting soft close work? When you open the drawer, this little plastic piece here pulls this pin with it and releases it right there, that stays locked. And the way this works, this pin just follows that channel underneath here. So I can also open this by hand, and that stays locked. And you can see here is a tension spring and a shock absorber. And when you close the drawer, this here pushes the pin out of its locked position again into the straight part of the channel. And then the spring pulls everything back and the shock absorber makes sure that it's nice and slow. Pretty cool that all of this fits inside here. Mounting the slide on the drawer is relatively simple. I want this part here to be flush with the front surface. And I slide it a little bit back until I see the slot and make a mark right there. There I can now make a pilot hole and drive a screw in. When you slide back further there come the next slots but I won't use them. I want to use the ones all the way in the back and at one position I can see the slot and make a mark. Then with this lever you can disassemble it. And then again pilot drill and mount the screw. Depending on the weight inside the drawers you might want to add more screws but in my case that will be enough. I now do this to all drawers on both sides. Next mounting the other part of the slide in the cabinet. They will be placed about here and now the front hole lines up perfectly with this leg so I can use this hole. The back unfortunately not so I have to use this slot but there is no material to screw into. So I'm adding a strip of wood exactly at that location which I can screw into this panel. That's why I made this 12 millimeters thick. And it happens that the offcut of the tabletop I'm using has the exact thickness I need for this. The first slide gets 3mm clearance space so the drawer won't rub against this piece here. So I add a little piece of MDF as a shim. Here I screw together two blocks that give me the distance from the front leg. Now I can bump it up against this and screw it in place. I have to slide this a little out to see the slot. Then I can again mark it. To see the front hole I need to slide this a little bit out. And pre-drilling therefore a self-centering bit is very nice. Both sides mounted, I can try it out. It works. And there's enough clearance. For the other slides I put the cabinet on its sides, that makes it much easier to work on. The next one is exactly 72 millimeters away from the first one. So I made the spacer that has that width and the rest is basically the same. For the drawer fronts I'm using the same phenolic resin coated plywood that I'm using on all my drawer fronts. First of all I drill a pilot hole with a countersink. Also a slight countersink from the outside so the material that the screw pulls up has some place to go and there won't be a gap. Next I raise the drawer a little bit up by putting a washer in each corner. Then I center out the drawer front, clamp it down and drive the screws in. 
At the moment all drawer fronts are oversized on purpose because now I can trim cut them to a perfect fit and make sure that the gaps between all the drawer fronts are the same. Now one thing to avoid is exactly this. How would you open the drawer now without poles? I can still open them by reaching underneath here, but if you cannot do that, then you are in big trouble getting the drawers open again. So keep that in mind, leave one drawer out. Speaking of the drawer poles, I have these left over from another project and in that video I showed how I made them. So now I just have to install them. They have holes already drilled and I still have the template with the hole spacing. It has a center mark that I can line up with the center mark on the drawer front. With a square I slide it down a little, actually by the distance from the setup block that I used previously. Nothing specific here, that just puts the drawer at a nice location. And I clamp it down, then I clamp it down a lot better and then can transfer the holes. And I can screw it in place. The drawers themselves are now finished, next putting some stuff in it. The accessories that come with the Tormek as well as the sharpening jig kits are all nicely organized in these foam trays and it would be a shame to throw them away. The cabinet they sell of course perfectly fits these trays and so do the drawers I made. Unfortunately it wasn't always as simple as that. Uh oh. That is too tight. But after removing a tiny bit on the bandsaw, this fits as well. If it doesn't fit, make it fit. Now it's all done, the Tormek has its home. Everything that belongs to it is where it needs to be, at the machine. So I'm ready to sharpen anything now. And then the spring pulls back the drawer and the shock absorber makes sure that it does that quite slowly. This tensions a tension 